Hi, my name's James Patterson, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you a few very useful features of the brush tool. So we'll see that with a few changes to the settings, we can actually create some very interesting effects, like the effects applied to the girl in this image. So let's start by opening up our brush girl before JPEG into Photoshop. And I'm going to start by going over a few of the basics of the brush tool. So you can select the tool by going over here to your toolbox and selecting it, or if you want to use the shortcut, it is B. So hit B to select it. Uh, once selected, you're presented with an options bar along the top of the screen here where you can adjust various different characteristics of your brush. So first of all, you have the option here to choose a brush tip shape with your brush preset picker. So let's click on that. You can see here that I have a selection of basic circular brushes. I'm going to go ahead and choose a nice soft round brush. So let's just paint with that. Let's just choose a nice bright color for you. So you can see how the brush tool works in the same way as a traditional paintbrush in that it will apply color to your image. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and undo that. And a quick note on layers, a good practice to get into is to always duplicate your layer before you begin working so you have your original layer underneath. So I'm just going to drag my background layer to the new layer icon to duplicate that. And then if I paint, I still have my original layer underneath. OK, so I'm just going to show you a few more features along this options bar. So if moving along, we have the option to change the painting mode here. So we can choose, we click on here to uh, change the way our paint interacts with the image that we're painting on. So we can choose different ways to blend it in. So to illustrate this, I'm going to choose color. And then if I maybe go for a nice bright blue, let's make that a little bit lighter, something like that. And then if I just paint over the skin, you can see how that is affecting the color of the skin, but still allowing some of the detail to, to show through. So, and you can use this to change the color of virtually anything, you know, hair color or clothes, anything like that. So I've made her into a bit of an avatar style creature. Let's go ahead and duplicate our background layer again and we'll move it to the top of the stack. And I'm just going to show you a couple of other features. Let's turn that back to normal. You have the option here to change the opacity and the flow of your brush. So changing the opacity will allow some of the image underneath to show through and change the transparency level of your brush. If we go to flow and this is very similar to opacity. Let's move opacity back up to 100. We'll go to flow. And I'm going to knock that down to about 40. So flow is very similar to opacity in that it will also affect the transparency of your brush. But with flow, when you paint, if you then, so I'm continuing to draw here. If I then go back over my line, you can see at the point where I've crossed over, it's actually doubled the amount of paint there. Whereas if I was using, using the opacity to control that, it wouldn't double it. So that's a few basic features of the brush tool. And so let's carry on. We're going to have a look at how we can load in some different brushes and apply them to a layer mask. So back into Bridge, I'm going to go back to this image of the girl a little bit later. First of all, let's go to this image here. And I want to show you some, a very simple technique to create this interesting effect where we're actually using the shape of a brush as a layer mask to mask out two different layers. So let's go ahead, we'll open up my eyelash before JPEG into Photoshop. I'm just going to go ahead and close that one. We'll save that. That's B. So here we go, eyelash before, and I'm going to start by duplicating my background layer, just dragging it onto the new layer icon again. 
and I want to invert this layer. I'm going to call it inverted. So I can invert this layer by going to image adjustments and invert. And you can see that's given me a negative of my original image. So now I'm going to try and use a layer mask and the shape of a brush to allow some of the background detail to show through. So let's start by loading in a brush set. So to do this, go to, with your brush tool selected, go to the brush preset picker and you can load brushes with this little icon over here. This brings up a drop down menu and then if you go to load brushes and you can load brushes by navigating to where, wherever they're saved on your computer. With brushes you can download absolutely hundreds of different brush sets from the internet. Any, If you type into any search engine Photoshop brushes you'll come up with you know, hundreds and thousands of, of different results. So I've just downloaded a couple of brush sets here that are free for anyone to use and I'm going to go ahead and load watercolour. So let's load that. So this last brush here is the one I'm after to get my shape. So let's I'll just show you with a black brush how that shape looks. Let's show you over here. So you can see how that's working. Let's bring my flow back up to 100. So I'm going to use the shape of this brush on my layer mask. So let's do that. We'll add a new layer mask with the add layer mask icon in the layers palette to give us a layer mask. And then I'm going to paint with black to hide part of this top layer. So I'm just going to paint a single stroke. And you can see how that's beginning to show the detail of the background layer through. So what I'd like to do is to increase the contrast of this layer mask so it allows a little bit more detail through. So I'm just going to do that by pressing Command or Control and M to bring up my curves box. And you can see if I increase the contrast like this, just maybe bring it down so it's quite a lot darker, you can see it's allowing a lot more detail to show through from my background layer. So I'm quite happy with the shape, but it's not in the right position or size. So you can change the shape and the orientation of your layer mask. If you just click on this icon here that links your mask to your image, you can actually move each independently of the other. So I'm going to grab my move tool and then making sure you've got auto to select and show transform controls ticked up here. I can then move my brush shape around and position it wherever I want. I can also resize it. I'm not too worried about resizing it too large because it's the shape that I'm really after, not the image detail. So let's move that so it kind of mirrors the shape of the eye. You can play around with this until you get it exactly how you want it. And then maybe I'll just go back to one of my basic brushes and just add a little bit more black to hide parts of this in the middle of the eye where I want more detail to show through. I also I quite like this shape here, but um, I want a little bit more of the eye showing through here so I can also clone parts of my mask. So I'm going to, using my clone tool over here, just hold Alt to select a source and then I can paint to bring that back. Let's just make sure we're working on the current layer rather than all layers. And you can see how that's working. So I'm quite happy with that. It looks pretty good to me. Maybe this area up here is a little bit blurry, but you can adjust that yourself. And maybe I'll move the position slightly more to give a little bit more curve to the image. And to finish off I'm just going to add a couple of adjustment layers. So to do that you can click on the create new adjustment layer icon here. And let's go to curves. Maybe just give it a little bit more contrast with another curve like this. Let's OK that. And then let's move my adjustments 
panel over here and I'm going to add another adjustment layer for color balance so, and then we'll just add a little bit of cyan maybe a little bit of blue just to kind of give a different effect and so there we have it so an interesting way to use the shape of a brush as a layer mask so back into bridge I'm going to leave this image and go back to my original picture of the girl here and I'm going to show you a technique to create these swirling line effects that you see running through the image here. Let's start by opening up our brush girl before JPEG going into Photoshop and I'm going to begin by creating a new layer by clicking on the new layer icon and we'll fill this layer with white. I'm going to do that by pressing Command or Control and A and then if I press Alt and Backspace that will fill that layer with my foreground colour which is white at the moment. Let's press Command and Control and D to deselect that and I'm going to show you how to make your own brushes. Let's start by, I'm just going to draw a very simple squiggle shape with my lasso tool. So with my lasso tool selected I'm just going to draw a random shape like this and then what I'm going to do is fill that with black. So if I switch to black as my foreground and then press Alt and Backspace, that will fill that. Let's press Control and Command and D to deselect again. And I'm going to grab my marquee tool and draw a rough box around that. Then if you go to Edit and Define Brush Preset, let's call it Squiggle. And hopefully if we go to our brush tool, let's deselect that and we'll go into our brush preset picker and you can see the brush that we've just made is showing up at the bottom of our brush preset picker. So we can select that and then you can draw the same shape over and over. So let's hide that layer. Let's go back to my background. I'll create another layer. I'm going to show you how to make those lines we were talking about. I'm going to begin by moving the opacity down to about 70. And let's bring the flow down to about 50, 55. And then I'm going to bring up my brushes palette. So I can do that by clicking on the little icon up here. This will toggle on my brush palette. And let's just dock it over here next to my layers. So the brushes palette gives you many, many, many different options to alter the characteristics of your brush. It's like a, a, a control center for doing a million different things to your brush. So using these this box here on the left, you can adjust different characteristics and then you'll see how they affect the tip of your brush in the preview box at the bottom here. So let's go to shape dynamics first of all. Let's highlight that. You can see this brings up its own set of sliders and I'm going to move this size jitter up to 100 and also move my angle jitter up to 100 and you can see how that's affecting my brush shape. Let's go to scattering next and, and I'm going to adjust these sliders. We'll move scatter to maybe about 800. Let's move count to 2 and we'll adjust the count jitter to about maybe 40 percent. There's no rules about which settings are best at all really. You can just have a play around and see how it works. The best way to, to, to learn how the brush palette works is to open an, a new layer and ha have a little doodle around yourself and see what happens. So I'm going to also go down to my color dynamics. Let's turn off transfer and smoothing. In my color dynamics I'm going to move my hue jitter to around about 30 percent. So if I just draw a line, I'll show you how that's working. So you can see how that's given me a, a really interesting random effect with the brush shape that we created. Let's undo that. I'm going to choose a better colour. So let's choose a nice blue colour. Let's OK that. And let's go back to my layers. So make sure you're working on that empty layer. And then I'm just going to adjust the size of my brush and we'll draw some random kind of swooping shapes that run through the image like this and then maybe go back to my brush the scattering is a little bit high so I'm going to change that to 
about 400. And let's paint again. And you can see how that's given me a different effect. Let's try a few very large shapes over here. Maybe that's going a bit too far. So you can just have a play around with this and see what what results you're getting. So maybe I've added a few too many lines here. Let's go back a little bit and we'll add some kind of more sweeping lines going through. So that looks pretty good to me. Maybe a little bit up here in the hair. And now I'm going to add an effect to these brush strokes by going back to my layers and with that layer selected, let's go down to my add layer style icon here and we'll choose outer glow. And you can see how that's giving a glow effect to the individual shapes of the brush. So let's adjust these sliders a little bit. Let's bring that back down to about 50. We'll move the spread to maybe three and let's bring the size up to about 10. So again, there's no, no rules as to which settings are best. And if I just toggle my preview on and off, you can see how that's giving my brush strokes a nice glow there. Let's okay that. So there we have it, a interesting effect with a couple of different settings in the brush palette. There's a lot more to have a play with. So open up a document and have a go yourself. So finally, I'm just going to go back into Bridge and open up my finished effect. So this is a combination of all the techniques we've just been learning. Um, you can see if I go through the layers in my layers palette here. So first of all, I created, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see the shape. I created my custom brush and then hid that layer. And then let's turn off all these other layers. You can see I use my custom brush to create some swirls using the various settings in the brushes palette. Then I, let's turn that one off and bring these ones back on. Then you can see I used a similar technique to the one I showed you with the eyelash where we use the shape of a brush and then masked it to so it only shows through in the hair. Then I painted another layer, so I loaded a different brush in for this layer, which was a set of line brushes. So I just went to load brushes again, and here are my line brushes here. So I loaded those in and then painted in a similar way. Let's get my brush and select that layer. And I painted in a very similar way to before, and you can see how that's working and then added a glow to it to create a similar effect to my squiggle brush lines that we created earlier. Um, and then finally, I just added a, a gradient set to darken blend mode to, to tone down this edge of the image and give it a little bit more balance. I also adjusted the blending modes of these layers, so the squiggle brush strokes I set to luminosity, the red hair was set to exclusion and the background glow was set to linear dodge. So this just illustrates how with a few changes to the brush palette and creating a few simple brush shapes you can create some very interesting effects yourself.